In this video, we're going to be talking about functions and domain and range. So I thought first, uh, before we start off, it's a really good idea to talk about what functions actually are. Functions, we use this notation that sometimes causes people problems. I just want to show you how it works. So we often say f, let's say, for a function, and we'll say in parentheses x, which is what it's defined with. And it could be like any equation. It could be something like, I don't know, like 2x, let's say, minus 1. So that could be notation. What this really tells you is there's a thing called an f, and as long as you know what x is, then you know you can you know what to do. So I like to think of a function as a little machine. It just follows a recipe. So you put in an x, so to speak, and then um, it tells you what gets spit out. There's another way of writing it. Uh, there's a, actually a few other ways, but I'll just show you this one here just in case you see it, you don't freak out. It's the same sort of thing. It just says it's like it's mapping this x over here. So this, we could say like f of x, and it's still we could use the same kind of notation like this. This is the most common form, though. So let's say I had like, I don't know, I'll draw myself a little box like this. So there we go, like this. This could be my little function box, right? And maybe I have a little box that says like, all right, I have an f of x, and I basically like plop in a little x here. I just drop it in. And what's going to come out? Well, in this case, just f of x. That's kind of boring. So let's think of it maybe with like some better example. Let's say I put in, I don't know, let's say I put in this 2x plus 1. This could be my recipe. Oops, minus 1, I mean. All right, let's say I drop in uh, an x, but this time I make my x equal to, I don't know, let's say I make it 2, and I drop that in there. So I put a 2 in there. That means everywhere there's an x, I replace it with 2, which means 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. So what comes out of here would be a 3. But see that I can have lots of other recipes. I could have something like, I don't know, maybe x cubed, let's just say. Well, if I dropped an x equals 2 into this thing, what happens? Well, let's see. I take anywhere I see an x, I make it a 2. So 2 cubed, which is 2 times 2 times 2. Well, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. So actually an 8 would sort of come out of here. Now, we don't have to call everything f. It could also be, you know, something like, I don't know, it could be h of x, it could be g of x, it could be any letters. Okay, we can see something like, um, in physics, for example, we have something like v of t, which is like a velocity or a speed in terms of time. It just tells you, here's a thing you find, and here's the variable you have to define in order to know the answer. So that's really it. So we can practice. We can say, all right, well, what about this thing called f of x equals 2x cubed plus x over 3? And if I this f of 2, what does that really mean? That means make x equal to 2, everywhere I see an x here. So that means that an f of 2 is going to be, let's see, everywhere I saw an x, I replace it with a 2. So 2 times, let's see, x cubed becomes 2 cubed. All that plus x, which is going to be plus 2, because all my x's are 2's, over 3. Let's just figure that out. Well, 2 cubed, we have to use our order of operations here. Exponents come first. 2 cubed, again, is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. So I have 16 plus 2 over 3. Now let's see, 16 plus 2 is 18 over 3, and then I could say, well, 18 divided by 3 is 6. There we go. There's my answer. So this particular question, at least, is done. I could do something similar with g of x. Ooh, I have something called a g, but that's fine. It's defined with x's, and I want g of 30. That means, again, anywhere I see any x's, I make them all 30. Now, because this is... Oh, God, I made that one look really bad, didn't I? <laughs> that did not look like a 3. Oh, God, what have I done? There we go. So um, let's just say what I need to do now is actually figure this out. So I want g of 30 is going to be, well, 4 times 30 um, plus sine of 30. Now I'm going to assume this is degrees. And there's a few ways of figuring this out. Well, first of all, we can figure out what 4 times 30 is. 4 times 3 is 12, and I just add a 0. Now what's sine of 30? You could do it on your calculator. So, I mean, I'll actually get out a calculator here. Got my TI Inspire. And I'll say, uh, give me a calculator. And I could say, all right, give me the sine of 30 degrees. I could do it that way. And I'll get, hey, it's 0.5. I mean, that's one way. So, yes, you could say plus 0 0.5, which, by the way, then is going to be 120.5. Now, it depends how many significant figures you want, right? Because you could actually, if you wanted three significant figures, it should be 121. So it uh, depends on how you want to do it. So I'll say three significant figures. There we go. Something like this. 
You could also do this uh, sine of 30 by hand. Now, it depends on which class you're in. It depends on how advanced you are with this stuff. But if you want to do this by hand, you actually can. Um, there's lots of ways of doing this. And I've got to have a whole set of videos showing you that. But there's a nice little trick, actually, that a student showed me once. It's actually awesome. This right here helps it. If you want 30 degrees, the trick is you hold out your left hand um, with your thumb to the left like this. And then if you want 30 degrees, you basically put that finger down. Now, I know the, uh, it's inverted, so it'd be like this for you. You put that finger down. Then you count the number of fingers to the left or right. If you want sine, it's the number of fingers to the left. So if I want sine of 30, I put that finger down, I count. There's one finger to the left of it, so the answer is square root of 1 over 2. Square root of 1 is just 1, so C is 1 half. This is awesome. So this is at least a quick trick to do it. So there you go, mind blown maybe. All right, let's keep going. So if we want to actually do this, uh, we could actually sit there and uh, find out what the domain is. The domain is just all the possible x values. There's nothing else really to it. So we can write things like, uh, and we tend to use set notation, we can say like x is an element of real numbers. For example, that right there, that could be the x is an element. This just so you can see how we write it, right? Of real numbers. So what this means is that any real number will be fine. Or you could say, you know, I don't know, you could say like x can't be 0, maybe. Oops. Like that, like not zero. Or you could say, I don't know, x has to be greater than or equal to minus two. There's lots of different ways to write it. And a good trick is to actually graph it, to look at it. So for example, what's the domain in the following? So let's say I got this thing called f of x equals square root of x minus two. Now, if you know about transformations, you could have seen this as a square root of x. So you could have seen it. So just I just want to show you a couple ways you could do it. If you're really good at this stuff, you actually don't even need a calculator for it. You could say, all right, well, I know what graph of square root of x looks like. It looks like this. It's sort of a graph like this. And if I want x minus 2, later on in some other videos, I'll show you how to do transformations. That would mean we move it, let's see, to the right by 2. So I know it's going to go something like this, if this right here is 2. Now, if you don't believe me, no problem. Let's actually look at it on a graph, because that's a good idea. So I'm going to open up a new page here. I'm going to say new graph. By the way, that's what I'm showing you here, right? If you're on the TI Inspire, do add page, graph, do f of x. If you're on the TI84, it's just y equals on the top. So that's what I'm doing now. So if I go ahead and do this, let's see. I want square root of, and I want x minus 1. And I get, do you notice it looks like, the, oh, wait a second. It wasn't supposed to be x minus 1. It was supposed to be x minus 2, wasn't it? Yeah. There we go. Pew. So do you notice it looks like this? It starts off here. Now, the way I like to think about domain is I imagine myself with like a little ruler. So I'm going to draw myself a straight line ruler here like this, like there it is. Now, I take this ruler and I scan left to right. That's how I look at domain. Domain is all the x values. So look way over here, way over here at x equals minus, I don't know, 5,000. Does my function exist? Can I find the y value here? No. Do you notice it doesn't exist? It doesn't exist as I scan left to right until here. Now it starts existing at x equals 2 and anything above. Look, over here, I can find it. Look, it's there. If I go way over here, well, the graph would be somewhere up here. So this graph would continue to the right. So I could say, hey, in words, I could say x is anything bigger than 2. Well, if that's the case, then I can actually write that down. I can say, ah, the domain then will just be, let's see, I need to say x is bigger than or equal to 2. That's it. So I write it like this. And if you don't remember how to do this right here, uh, it's like a little alligator. The alligator always eats the bigger number. So the x is bigger than 2. And this means equal. So there you go. There's my answer for domain. So domain, I scan left to right to look for the answer. If I want to do range, it's just the y value. So same idea. You could have, for example, y is an element of real numbers. You know, you could have y can't be 1. There's lots of different examples, OK? So let's actually take a look at this one here. What's the range of this one? Now, if you know your family of functions, you could actually sketch this one without a calculator as well. Whoops. God, that's not a very straight line at all, is it? Oh, God, I'm really bad at drawing straight lines, aren't I? Here we go. Ah, much nicer. So I've got my x and my y. And if you know about 1 over x, it's called the reciprocal function. Then you would know it goes like this. Kind of a wacky one. It goes like this and like this. 
got videos later showing about asymptote that's got some of that crazy stuff going on but here's your graph it goes like this if you don't believe me no prob look it up i do a new page i do a graph and i say let's see i'll do a pretty fraction i'll say one over x boom it looks just like this now when i scan for range range is the y values so because of that i'm going to scan with this i'm going to make myself like a little line and imagine it so here we go i'm going to take this thing right here this line and i'm going to move it from bottom to top this time so way down here can i find my graph sure look this one here would be there it would cross this one this blue line would cross up so, yep it exists at minus infinity how about as i go higher still exists still exists still exists except right here do you know something really special happens right here at x equals zero i don't find it but at x equals one ah things start existing again so you notice it's like it's like it exists everywhere except for this weird spot right here which is called a horizontal asymptote so because of that i could say well y could be anything except for zero so how do i write that in math terms i could say all right if y just can't be zero that's it it can be anything else so to see how easy this is it depends on the graph i suggest take a look at the graph look what it actually does you can usually then figure out what to do from there okay so that's a, a nice trick let's do another question just to be sure we have it and by the way i love this one how's studying going duck rabbit <laughs> if you look at it like this it looks like a duck if you turn your head it looks like a rabbit <laughs> that's so good whoever did this is a genius all right so what's we have this function f of x minus x squared plus four we want f of zero what does that mean again that just means i plug in zeros everywhere i see x so there'll be minus zero squared plus four well zero squared is just zero that cancels out that's nice so that sort of that goes away so i just have four so that's my answer then my answer is just equals four Ta -da. Well, that was pretty easy let's think about this what's the domain and range well it's going to help to do a sketch so let's do let's call it a sketch we don't have to do it in total detail i've got videos later showing you that the difference between a sketch and a graph or sorry between drawing and sketching but i'm going to just sketch so i want to know this function now if you know about transformations you could do this you know what an x squared looks like x squared looks like uh like this and i would know that a minus here flips it across the x-axis and now it's going to look like this and I would know that if it's a plus four, it means I raise it by four, which means it'll be somewhere up here at four here. It'll be that graph there. Now that's just because I know about transformations. If you have to learn about those, I've got some videos for those too. But if you didn't know this, no prob, maybe you have a calculator you can use. It all depends which math class you're in, right? But uh, let's say you want to do this with a calculator. No prob, let's do this. I'm going to put in my minus first, then my x and squared and plus four Ta -da! so it goes like this so it does look like this i wasn't lying let's look at the domain then so domain remember it's all the x values remember that's all the x values it could be okay and we've got the range which is all the just to remind you it's all the y values so let's consider these then the domain let's see i'm going to scan left to right because domain is all the possible x values, so let's just imagine. As I take my little stick here and I go way over here, can I find my function way over here? Sure, it's this graph just really, really, really far down. I'll find it. As I scan left to right, I can still find my graph. Look, it's right here. As I go this way, oh, there's the graph. I go over here. Sure, it'll be over here. It'll just be really far down there. See, this graph goes all the way down, but it goes to the right. So there's no problem with x's. How do I write that mathematically? How do I say x has no problem? I can tell you how to do that. You just write x is an element of real numbers. That just means basically no prob. X can be anything, any real number at least. Um, how about range? Well, range, I'm going to take this little stick that I had here for scanning, and I'm going to just turn it this way and scan from bottom to top. So as I go way down here, will I find my function? Sure, look, it's going to cross it here, and it's going to cross it here. So, yep, I find it, at minus infinity. As I go up, I still find it, I still find it. Notice the blue line still intersects, except here. Way up here, I'll never find it. This graph turns around here. Do you notice there's a limit? So in this case right here, I could say my range is anything that's 4 or below. So I could say y is anything less than 4. 
Now, how do I write that mathematically? Well, I'll just write it exactly like that. I'll say y is anything less than 4. And can it be equal to 4? Yep, it can reach it, so I'll put the equal sign. I'll put the little set notation here, and there we go. I'm done. I hope that helps you understand domain and range. And why should you care? Well, functions are everywhere. I mean, Spotify uses them, for example, for mapping songs, artists, albums. Google uses it for mapping clicks to ads. You know, they always want to sell you stuff. Pretty much all programming uses this. In physics, we have things like V of T, A of T. We have tons of things in physics. Economics, like profit versus, you know, amount of units sold. Let's say you want us to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius. The temperature then as a function of F could be just at 5 ninths times uh, F minus 32. So if you put in like 32 Fahrenheit, well 32 minus 32 is 0 and that's why it's 0 degrees Celsius. And you can see that hey they meet. So there's there's lots of places where we meet functions so to speak.